This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated Zalma on Insurance. Today I'd like to speak about a chiropractor who pled guilty to using a stolen prescription pad to obtain oxycodone applied to a pretrial intervention program that the state of New Jersey has and was denied entry into that program and then after pleading guilty he was so upset he appealed the denial of his pretrial intervention program entry even though he was only sentenced to probation the new jersey pretrial intervention program or pti is a diversionary program through which certain offenders are able to avoid criminal prosecution by receiving early rehabilitative services expected to deter future criminal behavior. In the state of New Jersey versus Jason Middleman, a June 22, 2022 decision of the Superior Court of New Jersey, the chiropractor appealed the refusal to allow him in the PTI program. Now, Middleman was a chiropractor, and in 2017, he was working at the Denville Medical and Sports Rehabilitation Center, where he stole another doctor's prescription pad. Over the next 22 months, Middleman submitted false prescriptions to obtain thousands of oxycodone pills. Middleman's theft and fraud came to light in 2019, and during the ensuing police investigation, Middleman admitted he stole the prescription pad, fraudulently filled out numerous prescriptions, and used those prescriptions to obtain oxycodone, both for his personal use and to give to others. Middleman was indicted for third-degree obtaining oxycodone by fraud, third-degree insurance fraud, third-degree receiving stolen property, and fourth-degree tampering with or fabricated physical evidence. Middleman applied for admission into the PTI program after his arrest. The Morris County Prosecutor's Office rejected his application and set forth the reasons for that decision. An assistant prosecutor reviewed the 17 factors set forth in the PTI statute and found 10 aggravated factors, considered several mitigating factors, but determined that Middleman was not a suitable candidate for the PTI program. Middleman moved the court to grant him entry into the PTI program, and a law division judge heard arguments on his motion, denied the motion, and set forth the reason for that decision on the record. The same day, the law division judge entered an order denying Middleman's motion to compel his entry into the PTI program. The following month, Middleman pled guilty to third-degree insurance fraud. In accordance with the plea agreement, Middleman was sentenced to one-year probation with a condition that he surrender his chiropractic license during the probationary period. The other charges against Middleman were dismissed. Middleman, unhappy with such a kind and gentle sentence, appealed from the order denying his motion to compel his entry into the PTI program. Middleman's arguments were rejected because they were not supported by the record. Prosecutors are granted broad discretion to determine if any defendant, including Middleman, should be diverted to PTI instead of being prosecuted. However, the scope of judicial review is severely limited by the statute. To overturn a prosecutor's rejection, a defendant must clearly and convincingly establish that the prosecutor's decision constitutes a patent and gross abuse of discretion. A patent and gross abuse of discretion is a decision that has gone so wide of the mark sought to be accomplished by PTI that fundamental fairness and justice 
requires judicial intervention. There, there's nothing in the record, however, establishing that Middleman had a lawful prescription for oxycodone. The material fact, which was undisputed, was that Middleman fraudulently obtained oxycodone. The prosecutor considered Middleman's use of the oxycodone, and in that regard, the prosecutor noted that Middleman claimed he had ceased using oxycodone voluntarily, and therefore the state noted that there was no clear de demonstration of an addiction that could be better treated through the rehabilitative programs like PTI. There was nothing in the record indicating that the state incorrectly believed that Middleman provided oxycodone pills to his girlfriend. Instead, the prosecutor in his rejection letter noted that Middleman admitted to using his former girlfriend's name on forged prescriptions so that he could obtain more prescriptions for himself. The prosecutor also pointed out that Middleman admitted that sometimes he distributed the oxycodone pills to other individuals. Records recovered during the criminal investigation showed that Middleman received fraudulent prescriptions of oxycodone from April of 2017 until February of 2019. During that same period, he was treating patients. Accordingly, it was not pure speculation that Middleman's unprescribed use of oxycodone could have placed his patients at risk. The appellate court rejected Middleman's arguments concerning factual errors by the prosecutor because those arguments were not supported by the record and affirmed the trial court's decision. In my opinion, for a health care provider, which is what a chiropractor is, to steal a prescription pad and obtain for his personal use and distribution to others oxycodone illegally to seek admission to the PTI program would have allowed him to avoid his admitted criminal conduct. That he appealed the denial after being allowed to plead guilty to only one count and be sentenced only to probation was unconscionable. He should have been sentenced to prison for such egregious conduct and abuse of his profession, and he should have lost his license to practice chiropractic for life. He should have accepted his good luck in the sentence and gone on to other things, hopefully honestly. This video was adapted from my blog, which you can subscribe to at www.selma.com slash blog. Thank you for your attention.